Matthew 13, 31 to 32. And another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which is a man which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown it is greater than the herbs, and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. We got to remember the beginning part of chapter 13. It says that the sower sows seeds and the bird comes and snatches the seed. And then he explains this about the parable is that this, the one that snatches the seed is Satan. Right. So what does it say? Right? We're talking about birds nesting in the tree. So a lot of times we think it's about us resting in the kingdom and God's glory. But that's not what he's saying because you have to get the whole thing in context. What is the birds? The birds at the beginning were not us. It was the wicked one. So the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed. When it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree. Some even want, some are even most regarded this as a description of the growth and eventual dominance of the church the kingdom community yet in light of both the parables itself and the context of the parables both before and after this should be regarded as another description of corruption in the kingdom and community just as the previous parables of the wheat and the tares describe so the, jesus is speaking about corruption within the church corruption amongst the people Matthew 13, 24 to 30. Adam Clark says, This is a good example of the majority opinion on the meaning of this parable and the one following. Both these parables are prophetic and were intended to show how, from very small beginnings, the gospel of Christ should pervade all the nations of the world and fill them with righteousness and true holiness. Right, So we, it is going to supernaturally grow because it said that it's greater than the herbs because a seed is small and it, it grows to a big bush, a big herb, but it doesn't grow into a tree. So it's a supernatural growth. It's a growth beyond uh, natural expectations, natural growth. Right, So he's talking about exactly what it was. All my followers... The spirit is going to spread and there are going to be so many followers, but, but so supernaturally big that it's going to get watered down and birds are going to come in. When it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree so that the birds of, their, of the air come and nest in its branches. Again, many of or even most regard this as a beautiful picture of the church growing so large that it provides ref refuge for birds of all the world but this mustard seed plant grew unnaturally large and it harbored birds which in the previous parables were of satan they're of satan right in matthew 13 4 and matthew 13 19 so here we go scripture says becomes a tree the mustard plant customarily uh never grows beyond what one would call a, br a brush and at this at its natural size will be a, an unlikely place for birds to nest the tree like growth from this mustard seed describes something unnatural the language suggests that jesus was thinking of the old testament use of the tree as an image of a great empire so this is when you when we get the whole scripture all the bible in context ezekiel 1723 Ezekiel 31 3 through 9 and Daniel 4 10 through 12 all talks about trees as an empire represent empire so we're talking about the empire of God but within the church right we we start building we start spreading we start planting churches and these birds come in and start nesting in this tree in this empire things of Satan right the parable accurately describes what the kingdom of community becomes in the decade and centuries after the Christian Christianization Christianization of the Roman Empire, in those centuries the church grew abnormally large in influence and dominance and was a nest for much corruption, birds lodging in the branches. 
most popular refers to most probably refers to elements of the corruption which take refuge in the very shadow of Christianity. There's corruption. There's no doubt. There's corruption, right? We all know it. And and, it, and that's how Satan this is how Satan and his demonic spirits come into the church and try to defame, I would say, this is my word, defame Christ by destroying the Christian believers, the followers of the Lord, right? Close study of the birds as symbols in the Old Testament and especially in the literature of the later Judaism shows that birds regularly symbolize evil and even demon demons of Satan. You'll see that even in the Sanhedrin, I think it's 107a, you look in their writings. Sanhedrin are the, uh, they're like the um, Supreme Court of the Jewish people of that time. And Revelation 8, 2. So, when we look at the parable of the mustard seed, it's about mustard seed of faith, right? But it grows supernaturally big, bigger than you can imagine. And with that growth, birds come nest in it, and there's corruption. Right? That's why he talks about the pear, the tares, and the wheat. Right? Let them grow, cause. You, we can't, we can't just uproot them all, right? Let's, let, let them grow. You'll see. You'll recognize. So this is why this is why Jesus is talking about this. He's telling them, pay attention, let them grow, and you'll see. Pay attention, let them grow, and you'll see. Right? So, there is corruption in the church. Jesus said it. Jesus is going to be there, right? So it's not a it's not a surprise to God. He already knows. He's telling us. So we shouldn't be surprised to us. Right? We shouldn't be caught off guard. Why? Cuz Jesus is telling us, don't get caught off guard. Not everybody's saved in the church. Not everyone's there for your great uh for your for you or for no, not everyone's there for your growth. Pay attention. Know them by the fruits. Right? You're known by the fruit, so there's judgment within the church. You say you're a Christian, I could judge you, right? But am I condemning you? Am I knocking you? Like, how am I judging? Is it mercy, right? But at some point, everyone's going to see if you're a wheat or you're a tear. So let's pray for people. Let's walk in unity, right? And God will show us. God will divide them up. We don't need to attack people, pray for them, and God will show us what to do. Don't get caught off surprise by surprise. Stay on point. Stay in your word, right? How do you know what's of God and what ain't? Jesus says, have you not read? John says, that which we learned from the beginning, right? That's what we heard, that what we were taught, which I, that is from the beginning. Let's get to the beginning. Let's consume the whole scripture, right? Amen.